Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to take a look at if we can use a common CD as kind of a makeshift spectrometer to see if we can identify the colors and the wavelengths coming from different light bulbs. I got this idea from another YouTube channel called Diodes Gone Wild. It goes into a lot of great uh, technical stuff on electronics and light bulbs and LEDs and how they work, and he was actually looking at a couple different uh, anti-blue light light bulbs and you use this technique so I want to give that a shout out and give you know give people credit for when they inspire me to to try it out myself so I thought we'd go through a couple different we're going to do a white light bulb just to see how well it works and then we're going to go through two red light bulbs uh, one is this blue x brand uh, from amazon another is a sunlight and you can see you know the red light bulbs they've got a white diffuser so you can't really tell from the outside what the spectrum is going to be so you really want to make sure you check it out and make sure they're actually emitting red so these will be a good example because we'll find a problem with them when we do the test so like I said, let's get started with just the white light bulb. And we can see obviously white contains all of the colors of the rainbow or at least uh, red, green, and blue to create the white kind of color. So a lot of times people will say, oh, you gotta watch out for the blue light emitted from LEDs. And that might confuse some people because it's obviously it's not blue, it's white. And that's because white contains all the colors, including blue. And a lot of times LEDs will have a disproportionate amount of blue light. It's got a big peak of blue light that we want to tamp down or we want to avoid. And so when people talk about watch out for blue light, it's really the white light bulbs that have too much blue in them. So uh, that's, that's kind of the first thing to look at. And then you can see when we hold the disc at the right angle, we start to see the colors of the rainbow, the colors of the, the spectrum. That's because, you know, each wavelength will have a different angle of, of refraction. That's why we can see rainbows. That's why we can see um, the light splitting through a prism, like the Dark Side of the Moon logo uh, for, from Pink Floyd. So, you know, you can see, we see, we see that blue, it's almost, uh, almost a violet, you know, cause you're getting down the shortest wavelength is, is the violets, you know, close to the ultraviolet. So we get, you know, that indigo violet, then we get some blue, then it's almost like there's a little gap between the green and the yellow. Maybe, maybe it is missing some, some of the spectrum in between. It's almost whitish between that, or maybe it's, you know, it's just the color of the, the disc. Uh, but then we get to the yellow, you know, and then it gets kind of orangey and it gets red. So, you know, th this test kind of obviously checks out. This is a 4000 Kelvin waveform lighting. So it's practically a full spectrum bulb, we would call it because it's got a high CRI and it's got good representation of all the colors of the of the spectrum. So, so this test does check out. Obviously, we can use the spectrometer. And we, you know, we can see that big peak of blue, and then we see the green, you know, yellow, orange, red, you know, all the all the visible colors of the spectrum. So again, if you don't trust your eyes and you want to double check something, you know, you can see all the colors of the rainbow when you split it through a prism or through a reflective surface like a disc. But what I want to show you now is, you know, we need to learn to train our eyes to see um, problems with different light bulbs and how they might advertise. So we're going to look at two red light bulbs or two light bulbs that claim to be red. And, you know, you can use your eyes first. Your eyes are a very well calibrated spectrometer. Uh, you should trust your eyes. Both of them advertise to be red. This is the blue X on the left. This is the sunlight on the right. We couldn't tell before we turn them on what the colors they'd be because they just have a white diffuser. This one obviously looks very white. It looks even whiter through the camera than, than what my eye sees. Um, and then this one is clearly more of a reddish, um, maybe even a yellowish. So like I said, you know, there's something, something a little bit off about it, but maybe you don't trust your eyes and that's where maybe a disc would help us, uh, you know, settle, settle what's going on. So we can see, you probably don't see, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll try to zoom in. Well, maybe I should turn off the other bulb. So you see, I, I do see kind of a band of blue. It's almost that, that deep royal blue. So it's hard to, hard to see in the camera. I'll, I'll zoom in in a second, but you know, there is a band of blue that we can identify. So there's kind of a, a band of blue that's just kind of hanging out there. And then we see a little bit, 
you see a little bit of green and yellow and then, and then obviously we get the red so it's you know that maybe the red is the dominant color but it's still leaking through some blue and some green and that's why we're getting more of a whitish kind of hue and we've seen this multiple times we've seen this with the planet fitness fluorescent tubes and we've seen this with uh, my computer monitor screen that still leaks some blue so this is going to be a, a common color that you need to train your eyes to when people are claiming that they're emitting red but it's actually red mixed with a little bit of blue and a little bit of green that you get kind of an off color from so you need to train your eyes and trust your eyes uh, and maybe some of these techniques can help you and then obviously we can verify what we just saw with the spectrometer, but the goal is you know, not to be so reliant on these tools and techniques and be able to trust your own eyes and use household tools like a CD to help you find it. And so we can see, we get that tiny little blue peak right, right down here. So you get a very trace amount of blue, but again, that's significant enough that we can even see it on the CD because our eyes are very sensitive to blue light and how the, the light gets split. And so, but we do verify we get a small peak of blue and that's what's making this, this spectrum so weird for us. Okay, so we'll get back into comparing this, this blue X bulb, which obviously has a little bit of blue light and that makes it kind of look more whiter to the sunlight bulb that's a little bit more of a nicer yellowish. But, you know, when I do this experiment, actually, I found a similar problem, is that I'm doing this, I, I turned off all the lights in this room to really make sure. So I cranked up the ISO on the camera, so you can see there is some blue, there's like a very faint band of blue that I never, noticed before in this sunlight bulb. So that's that's interesting. So I didn't expect that. It's not the bias I came in with with this experiment, but I saw very faintly and I had to adjust the camera dramatically to get this, get it to show up. So you can kind of see that blue. Okay, we're back to the blue X bulb with the increased ISO and you can definitely see that blue band now with with the enhanced ISO so that's a huge blue band but again we saw a little bit of that band in the sunlight bulb as well so that's that's a problem okay we're back to normal and so we did find a trace amount of blue in this sunlight bulb which I wasn't expecting I didn't I've never measured that before and I've got a lot of friends that have been using this bulb um, but you know we use this spectrometer And if you can really see that tiny little hump around that, that 437 number, I can, maybe I'll download this spectrum and I'll, I'll post it on the screen, but there's a very tiny blue hump. And so it does register a little bit of a measurement. So maybe a lot of people have been missing that if they've checked this before on a spectrometer. There's a little baby hump of blue light that still make, makes it through. And obviously, you know, all the red kind of washes out this this uh, signal, so it rescales for all the red, and it makes it seem like that blue doesn't exist, but it's a very small little hump of blue. So, you know, that's why we got to trust our eyes and, and do these other methods. Our eyes are very good at identifying blue light, especially if we get assistance from a prism or a CD. So, you know, sometimes you can trust the CD and your eyes more than, uh, you know, a device, and you always should be cross-checking what you see in reality. Does it match up to the, you know, the, what the device is trying to tell you as well? So the good news is that this, this bulb on the left is my uh, TCP brand bulb that I've been recommending. It's, it's got a, a deeper red color than even the sunlight. And this one, I believe, actually has zero blue light compared to this I thought had, had zero blue. The sunlight uh, actually has a little trace amount of blue. So let's do the same experiment with the TCP and see how that looks. So the spectrometer, which like we said, we can't exactly trust, we don't get that little hump in this spectrum. So we don't even get that, that tiny hump we saw with the other two. So that's a good sign. But again, it could be that that scaling is, is so small, there still could be a trace amount. Um, and let's see if we see anything with this. And this time I'm not really seeing any blue, maybe a hint of green. And let's let's zoom in and look at the ISO. 
Okay, so now I've, I've blown out the, the ISO adjustment on my camera so we can see there's, you know, there's no blue band like we were seeing before with the other two. If I turn, if I turn the other one back on, you get that blue band. See how distinctive it is? And then back to this one, there's no blue band. So that's, that's good news. This is the TCP bulb that actually has no detectable blue light, you know, from, from all these methods. So that's the one to go with if you really want to eliminate blue light. I've been using this one as my primary light bulb for over a year now because it is got that darker red spectrum. So it's a really good color. So there we have it. Even I learned something from this experiment. This is the blue X on the left that we that I can even tell visually without any measurements that there's something wrong with this one. This one was deceptive, and, uh, and I think a lot of people have been rec recommending this sunlight bulb, but I did detect a trace amount of blue with, with the uh, CD, and if you look at the very tiny hump in the spectrometer, so the sunlight is out. And then this is a TCP bulb, which I have preferred anyway, because like I said, it's, it's a deeper red in general. And we can verify that there's no measurable or observable blue light from it. So um, this was a good experiment for me uh, to help refine my choices. That's why these measurements and transparency help me improve my recommendations. Uh, and hopefully it helps you as well.